Good morning and welcome to your North Market. I'm Rick Harrison Wolf, Executive Director of the North Market Development Authority. Established in 1876, North Market is our city's last remaining public market. Much of our success is due to the great support of the city of Columbus, the community, and most importantly, our merchants, farmers, and makers that have called Spruce Street home over the years. As Frank Sinatra said, the best is yet to come. It is my great honor and pleasure to introduce Mayor Andrew Genther. Good morning, and Good morning. what a beautiful morning in Columbus, and so excited about this great announcement where we really are going to collectively leverage and transform an amazing community asset. Uh, it is an exciting day, and we wouldn't be here without some incredible leadership uh, from Rick Wolf, the North Market Development Authority Board, our great partners, the Franklin County Commissioners, our North Market merchants and farmers who do an amazing job uh, helping to entertain uh, visitors to this community and some of our residents who are die-hard true believers in the market, the past, the present, and the future. Obviously, our Department of Development team, Shlis Sen and Director Shoney, uh, and Wood Companies and Shift Capital. After undertaking a public RFP process, we are excited to announce our recommendation of a proposal by Wood Companies and Shift Capital for the redevelopment of the North Market. With this proposal, the existing North Market building will be preserved, and an addition will be added that will include a 35-story mixed-use skyscraper. The new addition will include an expansion of the North Market, a new public outdoor plaza, a public two-story grand atrium, and, to delight of some folks, at least for the time being, until Smart Columbus really transforms our community, 291 additional public parking spaces. This development will ensure the financial viability of the North, Mar North Market in perpetuity, guaranteeing that the last public market in Columbus will remain open to serve future generations of patrons, our children and grandchildren. This is just the beginning of the process. Following today's announcement, we will start a period of meaningful public input regarding this exciting proposal. The first public meeting will be held on May 9th, and in the following weeks and months, we will continue to solicit your feedback on how we can best develop this property, the public's property, into a fantastic new public space in our city. I want to thank Franklin County, who has agreed to be a committed partner in this project, Commissioners Boyce, Brown, and O'Grady, and I'm grateful for their support. I also want to thank Rick Wolf, the North Market Development Authority Board, and the North Market Merchants and Farmers. They make the North Market what it is, and they will help us drive and shape what it will become. Friends, the future of the North Market is bright, and we couldn't be more excited. When we undertook this process, we needed just the right person. I kind of jokingly call the, the woods the, the first family of the short north. And if you spend any time watching the neighborhood series that WSU has done, the Wood family has helped invest and make the short north what it is today. And they have always done it the right way. Paying tribute to our past, looking out towards the future. This is an incredible community asset, and I and our team was not going to turn it over to just anybody to make sure that it was preserved, protected, and made into a great asset for the future. And we have found the right partner to do it the right way. Someone who has spent several decades coming in and out of this market and is as committed to this place as all of us are 
for a successful future. And so we are thrilled that wood companies and shift development and shift capital are leading the way to make this happen. It is now my honor uh, to introduce our great partner uh, it's City Council who is helping us get all this done, a great partner, someone committed to the North Market, uh, and someone that will continue to lead the way in the future. Please welcome Council Member Michael Stinziano. Well, good morning, everyone. Could not be more excited to be here. Uh, before I start, do you want to recognize State Representative Kristen Boggs? She is much better than the person she replaced uh, at the State House. So wonderful uh, for you to be here and part of the best 22 square miles in the state of Ohio. Uh, as a community advocate and customer of the North Market, uh, very excited for today's announcement and for what the future holds for what is right now a surface parking lot. I grew up and still live a couple miles down the street. Uh, this was an area that uh, was a playground for me and now is something uh, with a four and two year old serves as a playground. We come down on Saturday mornings uh, to the farmer's market. I'm going to be getting my bouquet of flowers for my wife's birthday on Sunday right after this meeting. Uh, this market, uh, the vendors, uh, the energy of it is second to none in our city. And what the future in this project is going to bring is just going to amplify that. Uh, as a customer, I do have a relationship with many of the vendors and small businesses housed in the market, and so I'm proud to stand with Marty and other ones uh, inside the building today. The North Market truly is a gem of our community and very near and dear to my heart and so many of our residents and neighbors. Uh, when the mayor's administration approached me about redeveloping the parking lot of the market, I was excited about the ideas. What could this space become? Uh, there's already tons of vibrancy. How do we enhance that? Uh, and as council, we truly want to make every corner of Columbus the best it can be. So I'm looking forward to continuing the conversation with residents and businesses about maximizing the potential and transforming this parking lot into a thriving addition of our downtown landscape. I trust with the help of Director Shoney, Franklin County, and neighborhood leaders and residents will be able to shape this project, preserve our beloved public market, improve the existing use of this space, and truly build the future of Columbus. It is an honor to be here. Look forward to continuing the partnerships that have led us to this point. And again, that public input and engagement is going to be an important role in shaping what this project is going to become. So thank you all for the opportunity to be here, and we look forward to what the future holds. Good morning. I'm Mark Wood, and this is my partner, Mike Schiff. Um, we, as a development team, truly recognize the responsibility that we have to the city, to the merchants, to the farmers, to the community at large, and we embrace the opportunity to create a lifetime partnership with everyone involved in this development. Um, I'd like to give special thanks to Mayor Genther. Um, great cities are developed with, with great leadership. It would be easy to do nothing with this site, but that would be a great lost opportunity for the future of the city and the market. And I applaud the mayor for taking the initiative to uh, approach this development with open arms. The city gave us clear direction when we started to look at this development. They said no development would happen if it wasn't in the best interest of the North Market, just the way it should be. Our project will enhance the market's public space. It will give the market expansion space opportunities, and it will provide daily customer base for the market. We listened to feedback as we developed our development plan for this site. Um, when we get into the details, you'll see how we held back the sight lines to the building to allow for a, a wonderful outdoor farmer's plaza um, that would be developed as part of this project. Um, the first four floors of the development are, are masonry based, very much respect the surrounding neighborhood in scale, and the portion of the building that goes vertical is held back. Um, this will be a mixed-use development. There will be underground parking that will replace the current surface parking lot, and that will be designated solely to the market's use. 
The, sec the first and second floors will be mixed use with retail, restaurant, office, additional mar market space, and this grand atrium that will create, create a great social spot for the, co the customers of the North Market. The third and fourth floors of the development will be parking, and above that will be mostly residential, but we'll also incorporate some office space. I want to recognize Director Shoney and his wonderful staff in the development department. They've been wonderful to work with, and you can tell that they have a passion for this city that is shared with all, everyone that's been involved in this process. Um, I want to thank the commissioners and the council members. Um, I also want to thank Rick Wolf, who has been great through the process. Um, we look for, forward to continuing to work with Rick, the community at large, the merchants here at the market. We understand that this proposal that we have in front of you today is just the beginning, and we look to enhance it and make it the best it can be for the city through a lot of public uh, interaction. Thank you very much. I just want to also add thanks to the entire uh, mayor's cabinet, everyone involved, Director Shoney. It was a great process, a fair process. A lot of people behind the scenes worked very hard, and we appreciate uh, making it to this point in the process. And, um, you know, today's a very exciting day. We're very excited. Uh, we're not celebrating yet because we still have a lot of work to do, and we realize that. We have a, a great partnership here between us and the, and the city of Columbus and the county that participated and the North Market uh, vendors and the entire neighborhood and the entire Columbus community. So we're going to continue to work together over the next 12 to 15 months before we start construction to make everything the best we could possibly be, get input and uh, try to come up with the best project possible. And you know we're proud to be a part of this and we appreciate it very much. And we look forward to everyone uh, uh, being involved, feel, feeling free. We're going to have meetings on a regular basis for people to provide their input so we can uh, feel like we accomplished everything that could possibly be accomplished here. So we're excited today. Uh, we'll be more excited at the groundbreaking, and we'll celebrate when we turn on the lights. Thank you very much. And I, also, I also just want to thank Don Brown, who's we've been talking to about how we engage with the Vine Street parking garage and thank him for his um, willingness to work with us. So. Thank you. Good morning. My number one goal this morning is to fare better than Sean Spicer did yesterday. <laughs> So now I'll move on to local politics. <laughs> um, when we had the meeting last night for the merchants to introduce the project, and I walked in and I saw a 35-story building, I was a little taken back. That was, really was, wasn't what I expected. But in short order, Mr. Shoney stated that with projects like this, one can either be a Pollyanna or a Chicken Little. For 27 years, I've been accused of being a Pollyanna, which is probably true as I refuse to be a chicken little. I don't feel as though the sky is falling around the North Market. The naming of this development as Market Tower meant so much to me. We've been called the Short North, the Arena District, the Cap, but truth be told, we have always been the Market District. We have been the soul of this area for over 145 years. I give many thanks to those of you that have realized this. The attention paid to the expansion and preservation of the market in the design was noticeable and appreciated. A public market's purpose is to serve and make the community better. This design did not dismiss us, but looks to enhance what we already offer, and we will be continue to politic for this. We moved into this building over 20 years ago with high hopes for the North Market District. Within 10 years, we found ourselves surrounded as we were an island in a sea of bars. It's not easy to sell fish, raw chicken, produce, etc., when your crowd doesn't show up until 9 p.m. <clears throat> Having people living and working next door and hopefully using us as a source for their daily food and cooking needs will help what is truly the soul of this market, the fresh. 
I'm a fresh merchant, so I'm uh, maybe a little self-serving here. But I do worry about the fish, the produce, the, the poultry, the meat, the cheese. Those are the businesses that really need something like this to happen. Uh, this is the soul of a public market, is the fresh. So having this project and having people actually having daytime needs uh, is a great asset. And I really appreciate and uh, look forward to this project. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Steve Shoney. I am the development director for the city of Columbus. Um, I am your last speaker, so that's helpful. Um, my biggest problem is that um, Marty, her first line was so funny that I have no hope <laughs> of topping that. Um, I'm actually here to um, lead a little bit of Q&A, but before that, I do want to um, do what everybody else has been doing and give some thank yous. Um, I do want to um, thank uh, Don Brown. Don has been very helpful for us in think not just talking about the specifics but really thinking through how this district works and how this interacts with the convention center and how we make the whole um, uh, the whole elements of this project work I also want to make sure to thank all of the merchants we started this process with a meeting with the merchants um, and we came to this phase we entered this phase first with another meeting with the merchants and along the way, they have consistently questioned and challenged and engaged with us and engaged with Rick in a way that has really made this project better. I also want to thank the community at large. Um, people in this city get passionate about a lot of things. Um, I have found that people get passionate about few things as much as they do the North Market. And that is a fantastic thing. That makes us do our jobs better. So when we held, um, open forums in the fall. We got great comments and I think when you study the design you will see that the development team took those comments to heart. There is a huge expansion of the public space, of the places where people will gather and use this market. There's a huge increase of a customer base for the market. We're going to have 200, 200 residential units sitting on the spot where all of you are standing now, where the North Market becomes the kitchen, the garden, the, um, the prep area for those residents. It becomes their um, refrigerator. It becomes their basis for how they live. And this becomes one of the places in the city where, as the mayor alluded to, you can truly live a modern urban lifestyle, meaning you don't have to have a car. Um, and we're really excited about that. So with that introduction, um, myself and um, the development team and Rick are happy to answer questions. I want it to go on as long as I can so I don't have to go back to the office because it's so darn nice out. Um, and with that, I'll stop talking and take questions. My first question, um, how is this going to affect the current vendors that are in North Market during the construction part of the project? So for those of you who didn't hear, the question was, how is this going to impact the current vendors who are in the market during construction? Um, we are working very closely with the vendors and with the market to identify parking. We have a huge parking facility right across the street that will be available. We're talking to the owners of some of the surface lots to the west of us to talk about how that would work. There's also parking at the new Goodale Street garage. It will take some work. But one of the things that everyone is committed to doing is working through to make sure that customers continue to have access to the market. We can't come back here um, in three years when this thing's all completely open and have a market that has gone downhill. That won't happen. And we're going to work to ensure that that, hap that, that uh, market may remains strong through that period. Cool. One of the criticisms that we've heard uh, over the course of the last couple of years from some individuals when it comes to redevelopment from here up through the, the short north uh, corridor, that high street corridor, is that big buildings strip out the character of the community. You know, how do you answer to that criticism and, and what kind of um, comment do you add to, to mitigate those, those feelings? I think when you look at the development plan that Schooley Caldwell put together on this, um, they did a fantastic job. And part of the reason we chose this entire development team is, as the mayor alluded to, uh, Mark and the Wood family and Mike Schiff and Schiff Capital have a history of doing great historically oriented buildings and historically oriented projects. And then they hired Schooley Caldwell, which is 
um, a firm that's a local firm. They have great experience working in, his, in historic districts. Um, they have folks who sit on all of our historic commissions and, and work with our um, historic building organizations, and they're very sensitive to that. So when you look at the building, you see how the first four stories are different. And part of the reason the tower is so tall is because they have pulled it back from the street so that at the street, you don't have this overwhelming Manhattan style skyscraper up to the sidewalk. You have a different feel at the street, but yet you still have a landmark, a beacon that brings people to the market. With all this, with all this new construction, um, will it still be cost effective for the retail merchants to have a shop here? Um, so the question was, will it still be cost effective for the retail merchants to have a shop here? Um, I think I can answer for Rick on this, um, and if he, he'll throw his water bottle or something at me if I'm wrong, but the answer is yes. Um, as we've talked with Rick and we've talked to the market board, the market is committed to keeping rents for their merchants affordable. Their first order of business, their mission, is to create and foster small businesses. And Rick will say it better than I. We're, uh, for those that don't know, we're a nonprofit, North Market Development Authority. So, the number one part of our mission is to support and incubate local independent businesses. And a big part of that is, uh, is, is, is reasonable rents, below market uh, rate rents to get people started. So, for us to fulfill our mission, it has to stay that way. And it will stay that way. Um, it's no secret that this was built on a public city cemetery and there has been talk of will these bodies ever be excavated? Is there any plan with this redevelopment for the families or anything like that? So um, the question was uh, that we are um, standing on a former public cemetery. Um, and that there may be remains uh, that are dug up. There's a procedure that we work through with and the developer will work through with um, the Ohio Historic Preservation um, uh, uh, the Ohio History Connection, sorry, um, which is the State Historic Preservation Office, to work through how to appropriately dispose of those remains. Um, as you can imagine, it's parking lot now. A lot of those remains are unmarked, so it's hard to identify families specifically. But there's a regular procedure that um, happens when you discover those kinds of things. So you look at um, the meetings that you all had for input previously yes. to help come up with the, the, the actual proposal. When say that you're going to have public meetings coming up in the next few weeks, weeks in the month of May and, and maybe even beyond. What exactly are you looking for public input wise? Um, because it seems like the, the, the render is already there. So what might change as a result of public So I'll, I'll talk a little bit and then I'll turn it over to the development team. So the question for those who couldn't hear was, so we're having a public input process. We've already got renderings. How much is there to change? Um, there's still a lot of opportunity for change. We have a scope and a rough outline of what should be here, but we want to get people's reactions to it. We want to understand, okay, on those first two and three floors, what, what do people want to see in that space? What's most important to them in that space? Um, I, I want to be honest, part of the public process, input process is not going to be, you know, you're not going to see the tower come down to 10 stories out of that. Um, the development is going to be this level of density. Part of the reason you have a tower that's this tall is because when you try and when you are looking at providing the amount of public space and getting the street feel that they that they've really created with this, you have to go tall in order to get everything else you want on the site. So uh, I don't know, Mark or Mike or Joel or. In response to the height of the building, someone asked about. You know, we have all this ground to the west here that's uh, owned by the Hamilton Parker family mainly that's undeveloped. And that will be developed in the future. So that will make this, the context of this building make a lot more sense when that's fully developed over, you know, the next hopefully five to ten years. So, um, the, 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 and, and also, you know, height, uh, this is the city of Columbus district that, which has unlimited height restrictions as opposed to like the uh, Victorian Village or the Italian Village Commission. So the, the height is not as big of an issue here as it is necessarily there. But we feel that it's great for the area. It'll be in context when you develop the uh, to the west. And if, as you go through the short north, with you know the Hilton's a fairly tall building. The the new Pizzuti buildings have some nice height, and you know the 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 uh, mixture of you know different different heights is gives it a nice feel for a great urban area, which it is. 
You know, when I stepped away earlier, I felt bad. I forgot to thank Schooley Caldwell yeah. and Bob Loversledge. I mean, what, what a great architectural firm. Couldn't be a better partner in this development um, with us. And they will help guide some of that process, too, with the public input. But, you know, it's hard to know exactly what will come out of those meetings. You know, as we met with the merchants and the farmers last night, one of the farmers said, you know, he, he appreciates the covered canopy here, you know, so that if it rains, they have some coverage. You know, it's, it's those types of feedback and discussion that leads to changing designs to, you know, and it will be a, a process. I, I, we can't tell you what that will, the outcome will be of anything specific today because we don't know what those comments will be and how, you know, but we will be open to trying to respond to concerns and comments. And, you know, we, we really believe the projects become better th through this community and um, inputs similar to the um, architectural review commissions in Victorian Village and, and Italian Village. Um, you know, as a developer, you always come in with a plan that you think is the best plan and you just want it approved. But through that process, you, when you walk away with all of the dialogue with the commissioners, you usually walk away with a better project and a better neighborhood. And, and that's what we see happening here with this development. And, and one other thing, if I could just sh share is, you know, part of this process that we'll be going through is, you know, how much expansion space does the market want? Um, you know, so we'll be working closely with Rick as we look at the footprint of our, you know, building to say how much uh, of the additional new space on the ground floor should be merchant space. And you know, so that's the type of dialogue that will be happening as well. And, and also one thing I want to add is the atrium will be a public gathering place. We view that as a, like truly, an, you know, there may be a grand piano in the lobby even. And we, we want that to be a place, uh, you know, people come to the North Market, not everybody buys food or buys lunch or dinner. They kind of gather here now. So we, uh, you know, the seating at the North Market, we feel like is a little, I mean, no offense, Rick, but we feel like it could be improved. And we, uh, things like that, we want to work together to, to make it improved and, 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 and make these, uh, you know, for example, the parking was a critical issue. They have 132 spaces right here that they didn't want to lose and the merchants didn't want to lose. So we're going down a little bit, but they'll have the same size lot. They'll continue to get the revenue from this lot. And in essence, that which the city was very helpful in arranging the, uh, the North Market will own the lot still, so that, that won't change. So getting in and out here will be the same convenience it was before. And our main goal really is to make it more of a public gathering place and neighborhood gathering place than it was previously. I'm sure it'll probably be a little more clear once we see renderings, but can you just in more detail describe how you plan to preserve this building while giving 10,000 10, additional square feet? Like how does that work? The back of this, I mean, I mean, the new, I don't know if you've looked at the plans, and I guess we don't really have a good rendering here, and we can share them with you, you know, as we finish this. But there is a, basically, there's a big grand atrium that will connect our tower with the historic North Market that will become kind of a new social gathering spot. It will be a, a new space for the market, for merchants as they want to program it. Um, it's, you know, our vision is a two-story glass atrium that becomes this kind of social gathering spot that doesn't exist today. You know, it's pretty awkward going up to the second floor to sit down. There's not just kind of this fluid engagement, social atmosphere uh, of the market. And we think that that's something that's missing today that can really be enhanced. Um, and that will flow out onto the um, farmer's plaza. Um, so there's this kind of great synergy, indoor, outdoor space um, that will be developed um, as part of that public enhancement. So you're not intending to like tear down a wall? And no. Like Spruce Street will be far more engaged in the whole process. We kept the building back. The farmer's market, public gatherings will happen over there. And the city was very uh, concerned about sight lines from the convention center to the market. And those will really be enhanced from our new, uh, our new design. J just to clarify a little bit on that, the, the, this, building, this building stays. Uh, it needs some paint and a little sprucing up. But this building stays. Where we're standing right here, the porch and the farmer's pavilion right now is about 10,000 square feet. So when they speak of the arcade piece, we're standing in it right now. And then about right here-ish uh, <laughs> is, where, is where new things start. So really, this will all be market space. And then also talking about that Spruce Street Farmer's Plaza will be new green space, place for the farmers, uh, activity programming out there. So hopefully that helps. So construction, so we've got probably 12 to 14 months of prep work. Um, 
to go. So construction will start, uh, let's call it early summer next year. Um, you can assume for projects of this size, probably about a two year construction period until all is said and done. Okay, and thank you again for coming out.